Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. So we're going to talk about the narcissistic pendulum and why there's this cycle of abuse and the way their relationships go. It's almost predictable. So some of you are searching for this new supply. What's going to happen? Uh, was this person better than me? So we're going to go over a lot of different topics. Um, so first, let's let's get rid of this. Is this person better than you? Um, it's just a supply and it's hard to comprehend. But um, I... I heard this analogy about uh, an ice cream truck. You see an ice cream truck cr come and you hear that ding, ding, you know, you're excited about getting an ice cream. And then the truck comes up and it's a different truck. Well, you still want the ice cream. You just want what's inside. You don't really care what the truck looks like. So, or how quality the truck is. You just want the ice cream. And that's where the narcissist is, is they're just searching for the supply. And it's hard to comprehend, but they objectify things. And uh, they also do that in uh, porn by watching too much porn. A lot of them you'll see watch or a lot of porn or read uh, magazines, things like that. Um, be, and in doing so, it objectifies someone it takes away the emotions it also heightens the uh thought process of what is expected so it, it changes everything it changes the actual brain so hurt people hurt people and i want to get into this a little bit deeper but first the pendulum of the narcissistic relationship also other relationships with people who are mentally ill or going through struggles and i did say or are going through struggles because when we go through struggles whether it's depression anxiety we're changing our brain we're not in a healthy healthy state so whether it's an illness we're off and with these relationships with the narcissist a lot of times we feel blindsided we thought that we had a true relationship um narcissists don't explain things in the right way and we'll get into that more they also lie uh change things some of them um it, people in uh with mental illnesses their thought processes are different their ability to retain information correctly can be skewed at times uh they also have certain thoughts that distorts your reality like narcissists love to believe their own lies um when you say something so many times people start to believe it i mentioned before in a different video where i had a teacher who uh was a thin lady um just like a average belly maybe a little bloated but a thin lady um we all have our skinny days our bloated days but there was a rumor that she was pregnant and it was April Fool's. I heard a couple hours later that, you know, it was a joke. But in my mind, my mind sucked it in and took it as truth. Um, it was really hard to get over that because she didn't look pregnant. But you don't always look pregnant when you're pregnant. Um, but the narcissist, when, when certain lies are being put in their head, it's just like me with that pregnant lady who wasn't pregnant, um, our mind kind of absorbs certain things. So the narcissist absorbs their lies and starts to believe it because it's said over and over again, or enough time has gone by, or they thought they were convincing enough. Um, mental illness is really hard to deal with, but how does this affect the relationship? Where does the relationship go wrong? So it takes years sometimes for the cycle to unfold and i want to delve into this a little bit more do more research on the level of abuse and the length of the relationship uh and also on, on the other side you know the new supply what are they are they borderline are they bipolar narcissistic completely healthy over empathetic narcissists love empathetic people because it's an easy target and I was at the gas station and I was thinking about different targets. Um, my friend told me to lock the car and there was this person who must have been homeless or something, but they had this cart full of things. Um, it was very interesting what was in their cart. There's a car seat and this person's walking around like <laughs> they had everything they owned, but a car seat. And it makes you wonder, is this for your child? Do you have a car? Is it like... It was kind of a scary part of town. But I started thinking about the narcissist with their supply. 
who are who's a bank robber or who is a a thief going to target they're going to target somebody with the most money they're going to target somebody who's the most vulnerable they're not gonna pick a strong burly man over me they'll they'll pick me as a target uh if there's a richer looking woman they'll probably pick her and somebody who's confident they're gonna pick somebody who looks meek and scared so the narcissist learns how to hone into their targets they don't have a lot of um self-esteem value uh just like um if i was stronger than the attacker i won't be as scared i'm gonna be more scared if i'm not as strong so the narcissist is gonna go um to somebody who's empathetic who forgives a lot because they can get away with a lot and they'll push their limits to test people out and kindness to them is seen as weakness and you have to remember that kindness is seen as weakness and this is where things get skewed uh with so many different types of relationships is when you're kind it's seen as um something to take advantage of something that's easy to get over on someone and then that's when things start getting skewed so since hurt people hurt people once that narcissist um uh usually gets an injury things things will go along and sometimes they'll hurt us and if we react to that it hurts them back so they come back and then we get hurt and either we absorb it for a while and eventually we're like look we can't take this you got to change this um and 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 it's a pendulum every little everything affects the relationship so at first when the pendulum starts to change it's a little bit and then it starts going more and more and more and more and eventually it just implodes explodes it doesn't get better because the issues aren't dealt with and people discard because it starts uh getting off skew and uncomfortable when if you look at the other person and how they're reacting to things that things can change but people choose to self-sabotage uh victim blame um just everything goes wrong and you know people take people for granted and, and sometimes relationships fizzle out we're all so busy we're all absorbed in our work our families um that is destroying good relationships and we have to prioritize what's more important, you know, sitting and watching TV or calling our friend. A lot of times we also need to relax. You know, we can't be at someone's beck and call all the time. So sometimes we're like, I just need time to myself. And you can't feel bad about that. But and we can't always like help our friends. But sometimes we take them for granted. Like we should check in on them. We want them to check in on us. And when we start giving where we're checking in on them all the time, they start taking it for granted. And then if we don't check in, they're like, why didn't you call? I haven't heard from you. And, and it's not a two-way street. Society takes things for granted. Um, you know, I looked uh, at different statistics today anywhere from 20 to 45 percent of people in america have struggles with mental illness depends on the studies and the report but we'll say 20 percent one in five and this is where we're falling apart as society but we also have to be careful is hurt people hurt people and one in five or one in what would it be one in two and a half or so are are hurt and so when somebody is hurt they're going to respond to their pain and their perspective um you know like like uh let's say i felt i was heavy and i said 
how does this look and you're like well it makes your hips look big big something like that then I'm gonna either feel self more self-conscious or hurt um but if I'm confident in who I am and I'm like hey you know um I just got back from the beach and I love wearing my bikini but I put this dress on does it make my hips look big and you're like no you look good or uh you'd accept that but if you're like well that cut doesn't really flatter you I'm like oh okay I'll get a different dress the confidence who we believe who we are. So if I'm hurt about my perception of who I am, I'm going to respond to your question and either cause myself more pain or get mad at you. Like, oh, you, th- you think I, I look fat? You don't think I look good? Whatever it is. But, and then this person's going to shut down. This person's going to be like, well, I'm not going to tell her my true thoughts because I'm going to hurt her even more. So now there's lies. There's, um, poor communication and we also have to be careful because sometimes two people ask our opinion and so we start giving it but when people don't want it we gotta not give it and sometimes too with the omissions omissions are seen as lies and this whole thing where it, it's very difficult to have relationships with people but with this narcissistic pendulum um some of the injuries are things that we didn't realize what we're going on. A lot of times they don't say things or they don't say it in a constructive way. They say it in a, in a harsher way. Just like if somebody's overweight and you want to encourage them to lose weight, you don't pick apart their flaws. You build them up. So if you don't like the way I clean my house, you telling me this looks like shit, this looks like shit. You should say, wow, your living room looks really organized. And then I'm like, oh, that organization looks good and I pick up on the positive as opposed to man no no matter what I do they don't like this they don't like that it's a change in the thought process and the communication style of the narcissist is because they're hurt they're hurt people hurt people It, it, it eventually seeps out and they have this um uh, thing with uh, an example of full glasses of water you know we're the narcissist is empty and we're pour, pouring 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 and eventually we're left with nothing and then now that they're full they don't need us but here's the thing is the narcissistic glass has all these holes in it and as we're pouring water in it's seeping out so the more holes and the holes are representative of injury to the narcissist the more holes the quicker they're depleted so they're draining out our love we're pouring it they're wanting more so we're giving more we end up in a sense uh in their eyes useless and they're gonna go find something to fill them back up but they're always gonna have those holes unless they work on plugging those holes filling their heart back up um somebody else can't do that somebody else can't do that they have to they have to just like we have to right now with the pain that we're going through no nobody's gonna feel that but ourselves you know I've been through some trauma and I I uh hang out with people um I'm still sad and I'm working on myself accepting certain things and you know, uh, each little thing with the narcissist though, is, um, we can say something in response. They're going to get hurt. So they're going to come back at us and we're going to try to correct it. But when we try to correct it, they're going to take it as an attack. So if we say, you know, I feel that you don't want to spend time with me, they're going to take it as you don't give enough, um, and, and it's going to hurt them even more. So they're going to come back and put pain onto us. They're not going to stop and think like, oh, have I been too busy? Um, that's really sweet. Or they're going to think you're being demanding. You're needy. You're this, you're that. Um, and the thing is, is once... <laughs> once we're in these relationships, you know, we get hurt and if we can compromise, like, yeah, maybe we are a little needy, 
But all we need to hear is, no, I want to spend some time with you. Why don't we set aside next Sunday? We're not like drop everything, uh, glue yourself to my side. We're just like, what can I, you know, what's the agreement that we can compromise on? But they don't compromise or if they do, it's a false promise or it's going to be filled with resentment. And usually when you love someone, you don't have that resentment. So now we can start thinking, okay, every Sunday, we're going to spend every Sunday together. Now the resentment in them is building up. They're going to feel like I'm doing all this for you. When we thought they're like, oh, they want to spend time with me. They're setting aside time to spend with me. And it just starts the pendulum. And, you know, the perspectives on relationships that have lasted for years there's going to be um mistakes made and you know i've always gone to what somebody's intent is you hit my car i all right sucks <laughs> it really sucks but i'm not gonna be mad at you um i am very uh easygoing um but if you're purposely popping my tires, busting out my windshield, I'm going to be a little more ticked. Um, I forgive when it's not done on purpose. Uh, and sometimes too, you know, uh, if I didn't express things, it's on me that I didn't express what was important to me. So you might have hurt me, but that's not me because I didn't express it. But if I said, look, this is my birthday. It's extremely important to me that you show up. If you can't, I'll accept that. But if you say yes, like I need to count on you. Um, because you'd rather hear no. And it's okay. You'd, you'd rather have them there, but you'll accept a no. But for them not to show up and blow you off, it's going to hurt you more than a no. So expressing that, and then they still do it. Uh, over time, those injuries build up, the reactive abuse builds up. And eventually, uh, the narcissist feels that they did nothing wrong, that they're entitled to whatever, that they just want to live their own life. They don't really want to compromise. And in a loving relationship, you compromise. They don't want that. That's where the difference is. So resentment builds up, anger, frustration. You're also a punching bag. Uh, hopefully not truly physically. They can be physically uh, violent, uh, but you're a punching bag for your emotions. And it's because of the pain that they're feeling, they're not healing, they're projecting it. They're uh, putting it on to whatever target they can. And it's so weird how the mind works and the perceptions and the coping strategies that you know if they're frustrated at work that they didn't get the promotion you do something wrong they're going to belittle you but it's really not about you you know you burnt dinner you're a piece of shit cook you're this you're that and it's like okay i made a mistake like i wasn't purposely trying to burn your dinner um but that pain from them not getting that promotion or whatever is going to come on to you. So you're sitting here like, I tried to do everything right. I tried to make dinner. I messed up. Um, and there should be understanding. Like, I get it. You didn't mean to do that. It's not that big of a deal. We have other food. We can eat cereal. But over time, that pendulum just starts swinging. And the lies, we don't see it as much because the lies are kind of like stabilizers to where the narcissist doesn't want to take accountability, doesn't want us to see how off skewed it is. So we, we see our emotional instability now that we're like, what's going on? We're starting to feel a little off. We're not really seeing so much from them because we're feeling what we're feeling. We're putting our perception into it and we're thinking we're we're overthinking sometimes and the narcissist uh doesn't feel it as much because they think everything's going good because they think they're blindsiding us because of all those lie stabilizers and if anything uh gets found out 
whether they spent all that money or without telling us or they cheated or whatever it is it's gonna make that pendulum swing and we're gonna see it we're gonna whoa get into panic mode and we're trying to understand and we didn't see it coming because we didn't see those lie stabilizers and eventually those get found out or at least some of them and then the narcissist they feel that big change they think we're the ones that have changed so much we didn't change that much we i mean we did over time people change during relationships and so we were kind of feeling it and once those stabilizers go off it's like a slam in the narcissist's face it's a bigger exchange um a change for them in a sense uh because they thought they were hiding under that mask and that mask got ripped off and either that or it all built up over time and you saw who they really were and it's different when You know, people make mistakes. People can be selfish at times. People need time to themselves. And there's like this balance, but it's the communication that makes a difference. So if I'm like, hey, can I spend some time with you? And you're like, you're annoying as fuck. Get the fuck away from me. I'm going to take it as you don't want to spend time with me. As opposed to I'm really overwhelmed right now. I love you. It, it might be a week or two, but just know I love you. It's, it's a different way of communicating. So now they hurt me. Now I'm clingy because now I'm like, do they love me? Do they not love me? And it changes because of all the abuse that goes back and forth. And a lot of our intentions are good. But since the narcissist manipulates so much, they're going to think that our good intentions are manipulation tactics. Like, why is she making a really nice dinner? Why'd she get dressed up so much? Is she cheating on me? Uh, you know, uh, trying to overcompensate. But the narcissist, they, it's like they know the tricks of the trade. So even if you do something innocently, they think it's a manipulation tactic. And that's why I always go to the intent. But they don't. They don't look at the intent. They look at the intent from their perspective. Like you're getting dressed up probably cheating on me you spend a little bit extra money on dinner tonight you're probably trying to cover something up we we take it from our perspective like oh, that's so sweet they they took me to an even nicer like they're they're really trying but their intent might be to cover something up and we're missing it because of our perspective versus their perspective and eventually over time it just snowballs and the relationship gets destroyed or they withdraw. Um, that can be one of the most painful things. Uh, they withdraw because they have to take accountability around us. And it can be something as easy as like, you know, asking a simple question like, oh, you were, um, you know, 10 minutes late. Was everything okay? Uh, and, and we're just honestly like, I know the car wasn't working right. Did everything go all right? Did, and they're like, oh, you always checking up on me. And it's like, I was just trying to have a conversation. Like we're, we're not always male intent in our conversations, but since they're so male intent on theirs, that it seeps out into the healthy conversations. And once that happens, it throws everything off. And that is going to happen. But in the beginning, you don't notice it so much. Like you can go on a boat. You're not scared. Whatever. It's okay. You know, you feel a little. But once it's really rocky, it gets scary and terrifying. And, and that's just a cycle of the narcissistic relationship. They build you up, make you feel stable. And then they start eating away at it during the devaluation stage. And... The discard is over. And they don't try to save you. They don't try to make it better. And if it got rocky, you know, uh, sometimes we stick things out a little longer than we should. And I think a lot of that goes to who we are as people, where we see the good in people. We also compare to ourselves, like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that um said things the wrong way i was a little tired and i was cranky or my hormones were off or, or whatever the reason 
and we're like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but it's different with the narcissist. So like, get over it. What you know? I did it. I did it. Whatever. It turns toxic, and just like uh, I had COVID, what was it, two, three weeks ago, and uh, you know, at first you're like, I don't feel too good. I don't know. I'm starting to get tired, and eventually it hits you. That's the virus spreading. It's not as noticeable. I probably went, I don't know, a day or two or three without even knowing it was inside me. And same with the toxicity of the narcissistic relationship. You don't always know it's toxic. And eventually it builds up and builds up to this point of, whoa, something's wrong. And, you know, can the relationship be healed? You know, um, the narcissist is always going to be toxic. It's always going to be toxic. And there's lingering effects. Like right now I am struggling with uh, how tired I am. I, I healed, but I'm exhausted. And with the relationship with the narcissist, even if it gets better, there's still the residual effects of broken trust not knowing if they're lying because they can be very good at lying so even when they say something you're questioning things and we're not wanting to rock the boat so we either keep it quiet or like i don't know if that's really the truth and so it starts eating at us too we're Actions and intent are, are very important on the relationships that we deal with, with people, you know, because uh, let's say somebody's struggling with depression, you know, they're a little short tempered or they don't want to hang out with you or uh, they forgot to meet up with you and they were rude and didn't call. Is this how they're always going to treat you? You know, we, we should have some compassion to people going through things. Otherwise, the world's discarding the world. But it goes to the intent. And with the narcissist, it's, it's always self-serving. And a lot of times, this is where it gets scary. A lot of times it turns into male intent. That they purposely want to hurt you. You know, a lot of them could let you go. They could say, look, you know... I'm in a relationship or, um, you know, telling us to, you know, maybe have friends with a different group of people other, other than them that were not working out as friends or lovers or whatever it is. Uh, but I've also noticed too, a lot of people saying that they had narcissistic parents and I do not dispute. There's a lot of narcissistic parents out there. As we're trying to figure out what our person was, we need to look at the perspectives from both sides. Not just, we have to, we have to get into their mind of how they would see it. Um, because sometimes parents have good intentions, but it's not what the kid wanted. And it's like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, there are definitely narcissistic parents out there, but sometimes too, it's, uh, you know, was the intent good? Because I grew up too sheltered and it's caused problems in my life. I'm way too sheltered. I'm extremely book smart, stupid as fuck out on the street. And that can be dangerous. But my parents had good intent. Can I hate them for them? That it, it's something I have. I have to learn to be a little more street smart. Can I wish things were different? Yes. But uh, if they purposely lock me in a closet, it, it, it's different. I ended up street stupid because I was 
being abused. Um, I don't know. It's, it's such a crazy balance. Because some people, just like us, we had good intentions. We weren't abusing our person. You know, we were reacting or maybe we made a poor choice. Doesn't mean we're not valuable. Like my parents, very valuable. Recently lost my dad, but uh, very thankful. Still ticked off about a couple things they did. But it wasn't male intent. And kind of like a... Uh, I don't know. There's some things that weren't perfect, but uh, like one was uh, I wanted to be a nurse and my parents would pay for me to go to the university, but I couldn't do the ADN two-year program, which I just wanted to get it over with and start working. And um, they made about the same it's a registered nurse. It's just whatever. But um, my mom wanted that. And so she wouldn't pay for a cheaper school. They paid for an expensive school. It's really dumb. But she ended up becoming an RN. So I think that had something to do with like maybe a jealousy that it was her unfulfilled thing. She didn't live vic vicariously through me. She, um, and that was, you know, I could have paid for it. I could have still followed my dream. But I ended up going to nursing school. And uh, I had to repeat it because I almost miscarried my daughter. And then they closed the school on me. It is what it is. But uh, just two classes away from being a registered nurse. Um, and uh, what was the other was... Uh, I don't know. But they, they were good parents. But, um, you know, was our narcissist? The things they did, was it to secure supply or was it because out of love? You know, did they bring you flowers so they could sleep with you? Or did they bring you flowers because they appreciated you? And narcissists don't like to hear no. They don't like compromise. But comment below about the pendulum. How many years did it take to start feeling off? Because sometimes you can't see it. Just like I didn't know about that COVID virus for a while. And then it hits hard. And then it knocks you down. That's what the relationship with the narcissist is like. So if you stick it out, there's residual effects. Just remember that. And that virus is one of the viruses that can come back. The narcissistic abuse cycle comes back. It's not healed. It's not gone. It's a cycle. Some of you have even said you can predict. It's going to be every six months. Ours goes a year and a half. Whatever it is, there is that cycle. That devaluation thing. Just like um, if you've ever had a craving for something, you might crave chocolate for six months. You just got to eat it, eat it. All of a sudden, you're like, I'm sick of chocolate. And that's what it's like with the narcissist. They might crave the person they're with. And love it and love it and love it. Also, I'm sick of it. I want to try something different. It's just the way they are. There's something to them that doesn't appreciate what they have, even if it's exactly what they want. And it's really sad how uh, the cycle of abuse um, infiltrates other relationships, too. Because hurt people hurt people. And uh, if you have any holes in your cup after this abuse, fill your holes back up. That has to come from within. And start working on yourself. And still go through the routine of making your bed and getting dressed and showering and cleaning your place. Because you have to love yourself to heal. So to do that, know that the, uh, the um, you know, we're like, was I not pretty enough? Was I not good enough? Was I not this? Was I not that? We cannot get our validation from somebody else. We have to know, I look what I look like. I can make the best out of what I have. And people are people. They're still people. Whether I have a crappy haircut, long hair, 
uh, blue eyeshadow, whatever. I'm still a person. I'm still me. So it doesn't matter how pretty you are. It matters what's in your soul. And the narcissist, if, if uh, they didn't like something about us, it's because they don't like something about themselves or they're insecure about something about themselves. So if they don't like their hair, they're, they're going to rat on you for your hair. But if they're insecure about their hair, maybe they're taking care of it. But that's an insecurity that they feel is important. So they expect us to do it too. If we don't do it because it's not important to us, they're going to look down on us because of their insecurities. Doesn't it doesn't have a reflection on who we are or what we prefer. It's their insecurities. So we have to be secure in ourselves. And they they knock down our self-esteem bad. So I'm telling you, you're beautiful in so many ways. And the fact that you're here trying to find answers. Probably means um, you take some accountability for some of the things you did. And some of us don't want to do that again. And that's a good sign. Trying to find answers and understand. Don't get too caught up in it, though. Because uh, that can drag you down. Answers aren't going to be 100%. So once you get 60 to 80% of your answers, go ahead and have peace with that. And just know you're worth it. 100%. See you soon.